okay all right uh, welcome back we'll proceed we talked about um, prayer as a ministry uh, anything more to ask about it or we'll move on to the next subject which is praying for the family okay fine let's go to praying for the family and uh, see what kind of prayers we can pray uh, but before we learn about praying for the family let's look at a passage first corinthians chapter 7 uh, from verses 6 through um, from verses 10 to 16 and uh, here we have the message version of the the bible would uh, somebody want to read it out? Please take the mic and read, please. First uh, Corinthians 7, verses 10 to 16. You can read from your notes. And if you are married, stay married. This is the master command, not mine. If a wife should leave her husband, she must either remain single or else come back and make things right with him. And husband has no right to get rid of his wife. For the rest of you who are in mixed marriage, Christian married to non-Christian, we have no explicit command for the master. So this, so this is what you must do. If you are a man with a wife who is not a believer, but who still wants to live with you, hold on to her. If you are a woman with husband who is not a believer, but he wants to live with you, hold on to him. The unbelieving husband share and extend holiness of his wife and unbelieving wife is likewise touched by holiness of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be left out as it is they are included in the spiritual purposes of God. On the other hand, if the unbelieving spouse walks out you have got to let let him or go. You don't have to hold on desperately. God has called us to make the best of it peacefully as we can. You never know, wife, the the way you handle this might bring your husband not only back to you but to God. You never know, husband, the way you handle this might bring your wife not only back to you but to God. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Daniel, for reading that. Now, the reason why we read this particular passage is to understand one concept. And that concept is spiritual influence, okay, in the context of family. Uh, there is something known as spiritual influence in the context of marriage and Was going on is uh, people were unbelievers who were coming uh, to Christ and uh, sometimes what was happening is that when in like people are already married okay, they're already married but uh, one person accepts Christ or one person gets saved then what will happen the other person is still unbeliever they are still unsaved so to such people Paul is giving an instruction he's saying that if you are in a mixed marriage not because they chose to get into a mixed marriage. That's not what it's saying. It's saying if you end up in a mixed marriage because one spouse got saved, right? They're already married. But now one person is saved, one person is not saved. What to do? So in that situation, he says, uh, if your spouse is willing to stay, you that's okay. Let them be. Then he says one thing. You know, verse 13, um, he says, if, wait, wait, um, yeah, verse 14, the unbelieving husband shares to an extent in the holiness of his wife, and the unbelieving wife is likewise touched by the holiness of her husband. Otherwise, your children would be left out as it is. They also are included in the spiritual purposes of God. So this verse 14 is what is important for us today. Because what we are saying is, in a marriage, okay, or in a family, God gives the believer spiritual influence over the unbelieving spouse or even the unbelieving children. Unbelieving children can also be uh, in the purposes of God because one spouse is a believer. Do you understand? 
so there is a spiritual influence in the context of a family because god is the one who has created the family husband wife and children and we must respect that okay the structure of a family so there is spiritual influence that people can have in the family structure so just because we looked at this passage and it says you know even if there is an unbeliever uh, you know there will be spiritual influence uh, for young people it's not an option you can't marry an unbeliever as far as the bible is concerned it's very clear in many different passages it says that uh, you know marrying an unbeliever not just has uh, consequences you know just relationally but even spiritually the bible teaches us that the dynamics is completely different so don't even go in that direction right to marry an unbeliever now coming back to our point here we are talking about uh, spiritual influence so because we have spiritual influence uh, what we can do for our families is we can pray okay so those prayers are very powerful now somebody outside i've been saying this earlier also let's imagine that there are uh, there is a young person and someone is praying for that young person that prayer will be powerful but if the parents of that young person pray for that young person that prayer is even more powerful why spiritual influence okay there is something known as spiritual influence within the structure of family and that is the reason why in a family we are supposed to pray we are supposed to pray um, you know the husband wife you are supposed to pray for each other uh, then uh, the parents is supposed to pray for the children children supposed to pray for the parents uh, and it's very powerful when when this happens okay uh, now let's um, see what kind of prayers we can pray um, so we'll go from you know prayers that uh, husband and wife can pray for each other then we'll go to the prayers that parents can pray for their children then we'll go to prayers uh, which we can pray for our home uh, right so there are scriptural prayers in the bible so how to pray uh, here it is written in the context of a husband praying for his wife so how can a husband pray for his wife there are many points that uh, a husband can cover so he can pray uh, firstly he can pray for the spiritual growth uh, of his wife okay uh, what are the scriptures for that we have a whole bunch of scriptures listed out there we can pray from ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 through 21 uh, which talks about you know being built up uh, spiritually um, then ephesians 3 verses 14 through 21 again you know that that talks about uh, being strengthened uh, colossians 1 verses 9 through 11 which talks about walking in the will of god so based on these scriptures you can pray for your spouse now husband can pray for the wife wife can also pray for the husband the same prayers okay so uh, would maybe we should read two passages right so then we'll have an idea of what uh, these prayers contain so uh, could someone volunteer to read please uh, ephesians 1 15 to 21 and uh, another person ephesians 3 verses 14 to 21 long passages Ephesians 1:15 to 21 For this reason because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints I do not cease to give thanks for you remembering you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand 
in the heavenly places for above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come okay thank you nelson so um, there we can see some points which we can pray uh, such as we pray that uh, you know the person that we are praying for in this case you know a, a husband or a wife that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened that they may know what is the hope of their calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe so there itself we have three points that uh, the person may know god better that the person may understand uh, what hope we have in christ that the person may also recognize uh, you know the um the power of god the power of god which is given to us through christ so what are we doing we are praying god you bring that understanding to the individual that's how we are praying so this prayer you can pray for anybody we can pray it for the believers we can pray it for uh, our family members or anyone we wish to but because you know we want to pray for the spiritual growth of our spouse we can pray this prayer okay so each point we can pray for the person now let's quickly look at uh, ephesians 3 anyone who would like to read that ephesians 3 14 to 21 for this is reason i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ mm. for whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and you being rooted and grounded in love mm. may be able to com- compare with all saints what is the width length depth and height to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled mm. with the fullness of god now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that he ask or think according to the power that works in us to him be glory in the church by christ jesus to all generation forever and ever amen mm. okay thank you um thank you daniel so here we see that uh, god would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man so this is a point that let god strengthen the you know the the person we are praying for in the inner man through his spirit then we can pray may christ dwell in your heart through faith this is also a prayer which we can pray we can also pray that um they would have an understanding of how much god loves them that's what it says that you may be you know rooted and grounded and understand uh, the the love of god the width the length the depth the height meaning how great god's love is uh, towards you so in this way what are we doing see when we pray uh, our prayers become very powerful when we pray by scripture based on scripture so that is why each of these points maybe we can write down and we can say lord let them be strengthened in the inner man let them understand your great love which you have for them lord let them let the eyes of their understanding be open that they may know you better uh, lord we pray that um, what was the other one they may know the hope um, uh, you know of of the riches that you have granted to them so in this way point by point we can start praying but the first priority that we have uh, in praying for our family uh, particularly this is regarding the spouses pray for their spiritual growth pray for their relationship with god now what do you do if you're not married what do you do nobody asked me this question i i think the previous batch stbc they asked me lot of questions so what do you do if you're not married yeah you can pray for your family that's true your your siblings your parents anything else that can be done pray for you don't have a spouse no you are unmarried sorry yeah so you can pray it into the future that's the answer 
okay so you can pray it into the future uh, wh whoever that person is you can pray now for their spiritual growth and their spiritual development for their inner person to grow okay so these are prayers that you don't have to wait to pray only when you get married if you're expecting to get married then you can begin to pray this very very early so that's also a possibility so pray for their spiritual growth the second important thing that we will pray is lord we pray uh, for the spouse to recognize the purpose of god for their lives you know, we all have a purpose we all have a calling so all of us must thrive in our calling you got it so that's what we want to pray we want to say god you help them recognize their purpose let them not um, you know let them not be wandering here and there uh, let them recognize the gifts that you have given them fill them with your grace give them the anointing um, you know which uh, which they need uh, help them to fulfill every good thing which you have ordained for them you know the bible tells us that god has prepared good works for us to walk in I think it's Ephesians 2:20. So we can pray that prayer over um, our, you know, spouse or our uh, future spouse, and say, you know, God help them uh, to walk in. Okay, hold on. 2:10. 2:10. Yes. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So this is our prayer, Lord. Um, the way, let's say, maybe we are pursuing God's purpose. We are thriving in God's call. We want the same for uh, our spouse. So we will pray, God, you help them to walk in the calling, be anointed, have grace, open the door for every good work for them. Let there be no hindrance. So in this way, we can uh, pray for their purpose then we can begin to declare the word of God over their lives. So there are uh, scriptures for women, there are scriptures for men. So you can pick that and you can pray. So here, as I told you, this is in the context of a husband praying for his wife. So there are scriptures that say that, uh, you know, a, a wise woman builds up her home. So you can pray that. My wife is a wise woman. She builds up the home. She is prudent um, and she is my pride and joy. She is a fruitful wine uh, who brings blessing uh, upon the home. She brings joy and protection to the family. She is a virtuous woman. A prize, uh, uh, her prize is far more than rubies. She is blessed in all that she does. Uh, and uh, my heart trusts in her. My children arise and call her blessed. She opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is gentleness. Her own work brings her honor and respect in the city. So this is all based on some scriptures from Proverbs, Proverbs 14, Proverbs 19, Proverbs 12, Psalm 128, Proverbs 31. Okay, So we can write down scriptures like this and begin to uh, like personalize it and speak it over our own lives. Now the same thing can be prayed by a, a lady uh, and you can put down some scriptures like, you know, again, Psalm 112, you can say something like, you know, uh, my husband honors the Lord. Uh, he He's a man who fears the Lord and he is greatly blessed. Uh, or, or you can say prayers like he is respected in the city gates, like Proverbs 31 says. So you can go ahead and you can pray prayers like this over your own spouse. Now, um, as you begin to make declarations like this, what, what do you expect to happen? What can happen? When we speak the word, what, what is supposed to happen? When we are agreeing with the word? We learned in faith subject, no? Confession? It will manifest, sister. Uh, sorry? It will manifest. It will manifest. Correct. Correct. So that is our faith. When we speak the word, when we declare the word, Maybe our present situation is such that it may, you may feel like, what am I saying? It's not true, right? But it's a faith journey. You've got to stand in faith and you've got to confess and you've got to declare, right? And uh, pray over the person uh, whom God has put in your life. So in this way, we can pray for them. Uh, we can also pray for, um, you know, them to be blessed, for them to be successful, for them to have wisdom. Um, we, we can pray that, you know, they would make good choices, that God would bless the work of their hands. So just think about this. You know, we become one of their strongest intercessors. 
and that is so beautiful isn't it so you can pray for your spouse and uh, be like a prayer warrior for your spouse and hopefully you know they do the same for you and as a family you can uh, grow together in the lord similarly uh, there are prayers from scripture which can be prayed over the children okay so let me read out some of these um pray prayers so as i shared with us earlier uh, we can pray for the spiritual growth same thing whatever was prayed for the spouse can pray it for the children you can pray lord open the eyes of their um, spiritual understanding help them to understand the hope that they have in you uh, you can pray that you know god let them know how much you love them right so in this way establish them oh god in the truth of your word so you can pray for the children for their spiritual growth we can also pray that the children from an early age that they will recognize the purpose of god for their lives we can pray protection over them god let them not wander here and there uh, let them from a young age let them know what you are calling them for and uh, lord you increase the grace upon their lives increase the anointing upon their lives open doors for them to step out and serve you from a young age you know you can pray prayers like this and uh, uh, that that way the children will also begin to uh, grow in the things of god and fulfill them then we can declare promises of god over children and there are many promises um some of them are listed in the same chapter at the uh, end so i will read it now for us uh, the bible says that um uh, that uh, children are a blessing right children are a blessing so parents can pray prayers like uh, uh, my children are a blessing sometimes what do parents do they say oh my children are a burden okay they say things like that but the bible says that children are a blessing so we can declare that with our mouths and say thank you god you know children are a blessing now we can declare from psalms 112 it has a promise there it says that a good man's children will be powerful in the land his descendants will be blessed so we say that with our mouth god we thank you that you know my children they are mighty in the land they will be mighty in the land they are blessed so these are the declarations that we need to make with our mouths then um, there are uh, there are scriptures i'll just read it out it's all in your notes psalm 127 verse uh, verse 3 onwards it says children are a heritage from the lord the fruit of the womb is a reward like arrows in the hand of a warrior so are the children of one's youth and then uh, you know it says uh, the children whom the lord has given me uh, we are for signs and wonders isaiah 8 verse 18 uh, in isaiah 44 uh, the scripture says that god will pour out his spirit on my descendants uh, and uh, my his blessing on my offering so these are the declarations right that we can pray over the children uh, isaiah 54 and verse 13 is another passage which says all your children shall be taught by the lord and great shall be their peace so take the verses pray the verses pray the verses pray the scriptures and there will be power so in this way one can pray for their children uh, we can also pray uh, that you know god would um, uh, sanctify sanctify their gifts their callings now we may find that you know let's just take for example there is a child very talented in music um now that talent can be used anyway isn't it they can use it for good things they can sing a good song they can sing songs for god or they can use it uh, just you know these days you have all kinds of music uh, with uh, bad lyrics and you know, bad thoughts Uh, happening in them a child can even use it for that but as a parent we can pray and we say god we sanctify we sanctify the gift that you have given meaning what are we doing it's almost like you're dedicating your child and you're saying god i dedicate my child i dedicate their gifts i dedicate their um, capabilities uh, their strengths um, their life i give it into your hands you lead them according to your purposes let not the things of the world touch them so we are praying protection over children now yeah they may go through their own journey get exposed to all kinds of things but at least there is a parent who's praying for them every day like this okay and that is so powerful so we need to uh, pray 
for children to walk in the purposes of god uh, we can also pray blessing so those who are in uh, positions of leadership god gives a responsibility to bless we can either bless or we can you know uh, um, not curse is a curse is a very strong word but you know we can say careless words uh, about people but we should not do that especially when we are in positions of leadership and authority now in this case parents parents are in position of authority so never put down with your mouth never put down the child no matter how badly they are doing okay we are not saying that you should uh, not agree with the facts yeah we must agree with the facts if the child is not behaving properly or doing the right thing we have to tell them we have to correct them all that is there but ultimately uh, in our prayers we need to bless them right what should you bless um, a parent can bless their uh, spiritual life their character a parent can bless their health um, pray for blessing uh, upon their studies Uh, upon their um, you know careers their career choice their friends so everything we are speaking blessings on that that this child will uh, find the right path this child will do well in life as we saw earlier that scripture says right that a uh, that a, a good man his children are uh, they are blessed they are mighty in the land so as a parent that's what we must say we must say that you know my child will be mighty in the land god is going to use my child uh, wonderfully uh, for his purposes so go ahead and bless bless them now bless their future you know we can pray blessing god um, whatever direction they take in their career we speak blessings on it in the name of jesus whatever ministry they are going to take up we speak blessings in the name of jesus maybe their future spouse right so you can just pray blessings on their future spouse So all these things as a parent, because remember what did we see earlier? That First Corinthians chapter seven, there is a spiritual influence. We must use the influence. If we don't use the influence, what will happen? Imagine nobody is praying for the child. Hmm? Yeah, because. Um, see satan is very happy to create confusions as a parent when we are not blessing them when we are not uh, covering them with our prayers then satan is free to attack right but when we pray even if satan tries to attack god will intervene right that's what we are asking for uh, so it's a huge responsibility right as a leader as a parent to first of all pray pray for the people whom god has entrusted you with okay so uh, that's what we are learning so we can pray for the children sometimes there are uh, children who have gone away from god okay so at that point uh, we also need to pray for them to come back now when children have gone away from god okay let's imagine okay parents are very godly uh, they have prayed so much they have served the lord so much they have taught the right things they were very good parents okay but somehow the child initially the child was also very good attending church reading the bible but now something has happened right child doesn't want to come to church says i don't believe in god bad friends you know gone into all kinds of uh, behaviors and habits and all uh and you know these things happen it's sometimes hard to understand how can this happen such praying parents how can the child become like this see we don't have all the answers right we don't know how something like that happened but as a parent one can still pray for the child right and god is still powerful to bring them back so that is how a parent should be because even i know of some really good parents wonderful parents the way they brought up the children in the lord but you find that something happened the child is no longer in in the truth but even uh, like i have seen such parents they never gave up 
they prayed and prayed and prayed now their children are back you know they are married with their husband their spouse they are serving the lord okay so amazing things can happen if we trust god so we learn more about um how to pray for children who may have gone away from god or our loved ones who may have gone away from god uh, we have details in this chapter but i'm going to skip it because we will cover it later okay it has an element of spiritual warfare so we have to pray with spiritual warfare when people have gone away from god okay but right now the point i want to make is never give up even if it feels like all our prayers have failed we should never give up keep praying so don't stop praying so there is an example in our notes about a man known as um franklin graham okay everyone knows billy graham <laughs> okay the picture is there yeah billy graham very famous evangelist and uh, he impacted the lives of thousands of people but you know what his son franklin graham okay franklin graham um in his early years it is said that uh, in uh, in college he got into smoking uh, he was very rebellious um and uh, you know he uh he never listened so his mother she struggled a lot for her son um and it was it could have been embarrassing right like you know billy graham son look at you look at your father he is going and preaching everywhere and look at you okay but that was his story he was rebellious he just said sorry i have nothing to do with what you're doing but uh, the mother ruth graham she um prayed for him and uh, she even wrote a book um which says prodigals and those who love them okay so she wrote a book about her journey uh, in prayer for her son who went far away from god but the good part about uh, her story and franklin graham story is that god touched his life okay so at some point there was a turn around and uh, he came back to god and he wrote a um, book he wrote his own story uh, and that book is called a rebel with a cause okay rebel with a cause but the life of franklin graham now okay he is the one with uh, some good achievements uh, he is the president and ceo of billy graham evangelistic association right now okay imagine if his mother didn't pray for him right but it is a struggle and uh, even in the case of billy graham it happened but thank god for the prayers of the son has come back he's the one now who is taking care of their organization um he has uh, an organization known as samaritans purse okay samaritans purse um which which helps um people in uh, need and uh, he's also somebody who is a well known preacher who's gone around the world he has met with us presidents he has met with uh, uh, world leaders from europe africa asia latin america so his life is completely changed now but again what is the point the point is as parents right it's a huge responsibility uh never give up even if it feels like the child is going away from god pray for them engage in spiritual warfare right and we keep hearing stories of how god brings them back how god touches their lives um and uh, thank god for that so at the end of um, this session i'm just going to stop with the verses there are lots of verses in our uh, notes you can make use of these verses or uh, take a take a notebook or open up a, a word document pull out scriptures so let's say i want to pray for my mother i want to pray for her spiritual growth i want to pray for her health i want to pray for her protection you find out scriptures from the bible put it there okay let's say i want to pray for my father put write down you know my father and then what do you want to pray for pull out scriptures put it there i want to pray for my house okay house put scriptures and when we pray start to declare you know the way i was reading it out 
so you start to declare make declarations uh, prayer for children prayer for spouse so use the spiritual influence that god gives us in a family structure okay so i'll read some verses um for declarations for home and then after that if you have any questions we can address that um so here in the section that says promises to pray and declare over your home um the bible says we can pray something like the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in my home okay otherwise what happens sometimes the voice of fighting and crying and all that is there in the home but we are saying no we will not accept that the voice of rejoicing the voice of salvation is in my home that is the declaration according to psalm 118 and verse 15 we'll pray that okay uh, then we can pray and say that um, um you know happy are those who obey the lord who live by his commands um your work will provide for your needs you will be happy and prosperous so personalize it and say happy am i um i am prosperous god provides for my needs got it so this becomes our declaration we begin to pray this um and then you know you go ahead and pray other prayers which are written over there and um uh, i'll just read it okay i'm not referencing it because it's interrupting my kind of slowing me down uh, we can pray that god my home is blessed it is the home of the just my house will stand because it is the house of a righteous person my home will flourish because it is the tent of the upright and uh, we can declare and say that i my house is a peaceful habitation it is a secure dwelling it is a quiet resting place and god protects my home all this is there in the bible god has promised that if you are a child of god then i am blessing you with all this what do you have peace security prosperity um joy then um um uh, salvation right so take it how to take it put faith in it Just begin to declare it this is my home god i will not accept anything else okay i will not accept lack i will not accept um confusion strife quarrel no i am saying no in the name of jesus my home is a peaceful place my home is a secure place right so begin to speak declarations like this every day start to pray uh, and uh, ask the lord and you will see things change now we've already discussed sometimes the changes can happen immediately but sometimes it may take a long time before you see the change but we should not give up okay so i'm going to stop at this point but if you have any questions we can address them uh, we can talk about it when we are praying for the person whom we are uh, going to meet in the future mm. and we are praying for everything like uh, mention their joy peace it mm. should be like their the spiritual needs and everything yeah. like some are there our fleshly needs also also there like mm. uh, for me it's like uh, she must be she must know how to cook nice food it is like can we pray for these kinds of things okay yeah. extra points extra points like extra points um see i i don't see any harm you can pray right but ultimately i think you'll just have to accept who god has for you so in case on those extra points you see when it comes to asking god right for the future spouse and all we generally say there are two two categories one is non negotiable non negotiable uh, means you can't compromise on that something like they must be a believer they must be strong in the lord they must pursue the purpose of god for their lives they should be a person of integrity so this non negotiable cannot be changed 
right there are other things that we ask oh they should be able to sing they should be able to this and that is negotiable so if if at all they can't you will just have to accept it okay so it's up to god whether he'll answer your uh, prayer or not it's fine you can pray though there's no harm because Good. food is necessary Tasty you, food is necessary. For you us. can also cook, Abhishek. Yeah. Okay, we'll discuss this later. <laughs> so we'll move on. To Actually, the... I'm a good chef, You're so good I chef. am expect expecting. Good for you. Sister, also... I have a question. Sure, sure. We'll ask. Uh... Yes, Sister. Sister, Gattu. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, have you experienced all this in this uh, uh, personal experience that God has answered your prayers? Uh, sorry, Sister, I didn't hear you very clearly. Have you experienced uh, among these prayers for children, husband, mm. or for the house uh, that God has answered your prayers? Um, yeah, your personal I could... experience. Okay, so see, uh, maybe uh, regarding the home, right? Uh, there are these passages like Isaiah thirty-two verses eighteen and nineteen. So that is something that I always pray for my own home. Uh, I always pray uh, that passage says, uh, my people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, in quiet resting places. So, um, like I think I shared earlier, right? M much ahead I shared about uh, some challenges we had with my mother's health and things went wrong and all. So oh, yeah. those days were very, very difficult for us because, you know, when you're talking about, you know, peaceful habitation and all, it just didn't make any sense to us because there was always something going wrong at home. So, uh, but from that season, I learned to pray all these prayers, but I can see the difference now after praying it for many years, uh, how God really takes charge, how God's presence is, uh, even about security and uh, quietness and rest, uh, there are so many things that I can actually share, but you know they are personal. I can't share on this platform. But yes, I have experienced God uh, answer these okay. prayers. Thank you, sister. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Yeah. When a pastor's son is on a astray way, mm. so when people ask to the pastor, huh. so how your son become like this and why are <laughs> not taking care of this? Yeah. So what should be his answer to the people? How he will mm. defend them? Yeah. So you see, when it comes to um, somebody in leadership, right? Uh, when we look at the writings of uh, Paul to Timothy, Titus, there he lists out he who desires to be a bishop or a leader, a pastor should be like this. You know, he should be the husband of uh, one wife and he should know how to take, like uh, have his children, um, like his children should be obedient. There are so many such uh, things. Now, even though, let's say a, a person is like that, in some situations, uh, things go wrong. Okay. Uh, so what is your question? What should the pastor do or what should the people do? Yes. Pastor's son, is on astray way. Hmm. People will ask him and hmm. will why he, you are pastor, but your yeah. son is on uh, another way. Yeah. So yeah, how yeah. that pastor will defend? How he will answer to the people? Yeah. So see, as a parent, the pastor can say, "Look, I am doing everything I know to address this issue and this uh, problem." So I think it's fine for the pastor to give an explanation, right? And um, do his duty as a parent to take care of the child. Um, I, I don't see anything else that a pastor can do, right? Yeah, sure, thanks. But yeah, it, it's a little more uh, tricky when it's a pastor's child. I think there, there, there is more pressure for pastor's kids. So yeah, that's tough. But uh, in Code of Honor, we have another course, right? Minister's Foundation, there we also talk about how a pastor should take care of his own family or her own family, her own children. Uh, yes, there is the church, but we should also know how to protect our own family. You understand? So there are all those aspects.
Any other burning questions? No burning questions? Sure. So then let's uh, stop with this. We'll pray and close. And uh, I'll leave it open to anyone to pray, please. Either people here or online can lead in. Sister, prayer. I will pray, sister. Yes, Sister Getrud, please go ahead. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you have given us to learn and ponder on your word, my master, in detail, how to pray for your family, for your children, for your spouse, and praying for others also blesses us. Lord, give us that strength and that strong desire to uh, uh, pray on these promises, my master, and uh, to be blessed, whatever you promises you have for us, my master, Lord. I pray for sister, Lord, that she has taken so much uh, time to teach us, my master, in detail. Bless her, Lord, in everything. Bless the work of her hand. And I thank you and praise you for this time. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Gertrude. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Bye for now.